Hey guys, this is Christopher, and in this free CAD tutorial, I will be continuing in the path workbench and show you how to use the engrave tool. So, normally at this point, we would um, go into the part design and make a design, and then maybe extrude it and create, it, create a tool path from that. But actually, uh, we're going to start in the draft workbench instead. I've already created this in part design, but I'm going to use draft to create the lines, the shape strings that we'll be using for the engrave. So even if you've never been in the draft workbench before, it's uh, one that's used less common, um, you can still probably tell what all of these um, tools do. They're just um, like in the sketcher, they do lines, um, you can do circles, uh, polygons, rectangles, whatever. Uh, but there are a bunch of new ones too. Anyway, oftentimes when you're engraving, you'll be engraving text, and that's one thing that the draft has that the um, regular sketcher doesn't. But regardless if you're doing text or not, you're going to have to use the draft workbench for engraving. So whatever you'd like to engrave, whether it's text or shapes, um, you can create that on the face that you'd like to engrave before you go back to the path workbench. Now for me, I'll be putting some text on here and I'll just click anywhere here on my face. Um, it gives me my X, Y, and Z coordinates, but I can actually edit it later and I think it'll be easier. So I'll just basically click anywhere on my face, type in the string. This would be the text that I want to display, hit enter. I'll just keep the default height and the default tracking Again, I can edit that later. I think it'll be easier. Now the path to the font file. This will have to be installed on your computer as a .ttf. You can find free fonts all over the internet. Um, normally, when you're graving, it's best to keep to simpler fonts. But uh, you can just go ahead and click on the dots. Find the file that you're looking for make sure it's a .ttf and then open it up. That's the last option we need and it is displaying our text now. Now I'm going to come back to my model and with my shape string selected here's all of the data. Now the string um, I can actually change this to whatever I want hit enter um, and it goes uh, changes um, updates automatically. So um, another important one, the size, I'm actually going to change this bigger and you'll notice that it is adjusting the height. This plaque that I have designed already is two inches high and I set this to half of an inch so you'd think that the height would be a quarter of this height, but it's not. It looks more like maybe one inch, so half that distance. I'm not really sure why, but it seems like every time you set the size of your font, it's always twice what you set it to. Anyway, it's one inch high. Um, you sort of have to take that factor of two into consideration with your text. I'll leave tracking at zero, and the placement is the last thing that we need to edit. My position. Um, I'll leave my Z at zero because it's resting right on the face of my part, which is what I want. And X, I'll put at zero, and Y at 0 0.5. And that looks pretty centered. Um, it is um, centered up and down as far as I can tell. And it could go to the right a little bit. So I'll just bump this hundred thousands over and I think that looks good. You could play around more with the centering maybe do some more accurate measuring but that looks good and I'm ready to go back into path. This is where the engraving happens um, and I'm actually going to hide the body that it's resting on. It won't be useful for the engraving. Now before I start doing any of my toolpaths, I'll come up here to check out my tools. I'm not using any of these for just my V-bit engraving tool, and it has a cutting um, angle of 30 degrees. 
you can use all kinds of different engraving tools, but most of them are small and angled like that. Anyway, I'm going to create my job, and at this point in all my other tutorials, what I would have done is just hit OK, because we've only ever had one body, but now we have a body and a shape string. So here are our options, the body and the shape string. The text or any other draft that you created, it could be lines and other shapes, um, that will be your shape string. Your draft is your shape string. Again, I don't have a template, so I will go with that. Now, it's creating the stock around our text, um, not around the plaque that I had behind it. If you were using the plaque, you would have selected body instead, and then you would select geometry from the body, but our text is not on the body. Anyway, I'm going to leave all of these extensions the way they are, except for a Z. I'm going to change this to zero. What that does is um, changes so that the top of my stock is perfectly in line with my text. And I will do um, an eighth of an inch extending out of the bottom. My origin's where I want it, so I can move on to my tools. Add a tool controller for the one I have set up for engraving, and then remove my default tool. Here I would put my feeds and speeds in, but it's not necessary, I'm not actually cutting this out, but if you are cutting it, you would input that data here. So, in our job, uh, we have our tool, looks good, and we are ready to then create an operation. The engraving operation right here uh, will be asking for base geometry just like the rest of them. And the base geometry is going to be each of these lines. This font um, is segmented into a bunch of lines and arcs, so I just need to go through um, making sure I'm clicking control and select all of these lines. It's a bit meticulous, but that is how to get the path. So all of my contours are selected. I can add them to my base geometry and they all show up right here. For my depths, I'm going to leave the start depth at zero, which is the top of my stock. The final depth, I will engrave this um, negative 30 thousandths and add my unit because sometimes it will change. Step down, um, the, that size is bigger than my final depth, so that means I'll just take it in one pass. Heights are okay, and the operation, there's not a whole lot of options. I have the tool that I want, and I'm starting at zero. So I'll apply, check out what it looks like. It sort of made a copy down 30 thousandths below for the toolpath, and that's what we want. Okay, and now I'm actually going to hide my original shape string, and we can see our toolpaths right here. It's got one pass on top of the stock, and now one thirty thousandths below. And we'll see what it does. In our simulation, um, it shows our stock. I'm actually going to turn the accuracy down a little bit um, and go ahead and test it. Actually, one thing I'd like to point out beforehand is in our tool list, it says that the engraver has a 30 degree taper on it, to, so it comes to a point, uh, but it's not showing it right here. Even though it doesn't look like it has a point, it actually does take that into consideration, and it will look like it's cutting with a point. And you'll see that right now. So if the accuracy uh, were turned up, um, it would look a lot cleaner. Um, but you can see that the path, uh, the thickness is a lot thinner, um, as if it were acting as a tool with a thinner point, um, like it's supposed to. Again, there's some <laughs> deformities and stuff on the surface, but um, that's what we're 
um, dealing with a lower accuracy. If you just turned it up, you'd probably see a better finish. And the accuracy in the simulation has no effect over how it renders the G-code. It's just simulation, um, so you can see what's happening. Anyway, it is engraving um, the way I want it. Um, I can show this body. Um, that's what it would look like. And um, you can use this method for text. Or again, you could just use it for circles and squares and other polygons or whatever profiles you drop in the draft workbench. But it's um, it's a lot different than the other tools which go off of bodies. Instead, this engrave uses the shape string in the draft workbench. So I hope this is useful. If it is, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching.